How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Creator's Process. Uh, today I am sitting right next to Liz. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? That's good. and I'm very good. Thank you. So um, obviously, you know, uh, you guys know how the interviews go and all that sort of thing. But for today we're doing something a bit different. So you'll see on our screen right now, Liz has her um, notepad prepared. Tool, so, tools of the trade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, she will be doing a sketch of myself as we are talking, um, as I'm answering, her, asking her questions, and you know she'll just be answering them. And yeah, for something a bit different. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so and I'll put it up on Instagram and social media and all that sort of thing. So you're gonna have to look out for that link below. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, okay, so to start off the interview, so um, tell me a bit about yourself. What do you do? So my name's Liz Gridley, and I'm a pretty much full-time artist. Um, I started with a life drawing background and now I'm an oil painter and portrait artist. Fantastic. Yeah. And so how long have you been doing that for now? Oh, ages. So definitely similar to a lot of other artists where I was always the kid who did drawing and couldn't stop fidgeting in school and even when concentrating wanted to be doodling in my art books and that sort of thing. But um, no, when I was 14 I did my first life drawing session at Ringwood Art Society okay. um, and that was quite cool. It was my first art experience outside of like school art programs um, and that really set me on a path where I wanted to just keep pursuing learning and pursuing realism in particular. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've had a bit of a weird art education. <laughs> I did go to uni and all that for painting but they didn't teach me how to paint. Yeah. So yeah. I've been sort of continually trying to find different teachers and different tips and tricks and learn realism gradually over time. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and you said you went to your first life drawing class when you were 14. Yeah, I don't think so. my parents really understood what it was, but um, <laughs> they saw that there was an art society in Ringwood and that's where we were living at the time. So okay. they went, oh, this might be a good idea or something after school that you can do that's artsy. And <laughs> I went along to one session and it was just sort of a bring your own project session. And that was a bit... I didn't know what I wanted mm -hmm. to do, so that didn't quite work. And then they had one called life drawing, so we thought we'd go to that and then they dropped me off and... Oh gosh, and some, they didn't know what it was? Not, they kind of knew, but I don't think they really understood that it was full frontal nudity and that sort of okay. stuff. But um, the older artists there just took me under their wing and they showed me some tips and tricks and at the end of the session I was like, Mum, Dad, look at what I drew, look at what I drew! And they saw how excited I was and they went, yep, Aww. yep, we'll, we'll keep doing this. So yeah, it became my Tuesday night ritual that I would go to drawing and I gradually learnt some skills and it just set me on a path a little bit, um, which was really nice. Yeah. That's awesome. And I love that they were just so accepting, like they weren't like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> what, were you, what did they do? <laughs> but no, they were just like, oh, that's nice, you know, and see, they saw that you were just so passionate about it and I think... I think that was a big part of it, yeah, yeah. it was the fact that they saw how excited I was and, and that really lit the fire a little bit in terms of finding a way to keep doing art outside of just normal school programs and really pursue it as a skill because um, like you know kids you do like or music or sport and mm -hmm. all, all the kids want to have their skill and definitely I was like the art kid yeah I wanted I wanted to learn more and more about painting and drawing and that's sort of I think I've always had a very skills based want to learn in terms of I always want to learn the hardest thing yeah and one of the first things I was told was the hardest thing to draw is the human figure so I'm like all right bring it on <laughs> <laughs> so you're kind of just like oh really well I'm going to test that theory <laughs> pretty much and I'm still drawing the human figure so <laughs> still going really well I'm, I haven't finished that challenge yet but you know I'm going to keep practicing as long as I can I love it oh, that's yeah. awesome that's really awesome and so because like you said that uh, you study a lot into realism and yes. so what was the thing that I guess attracted you to realism like out of all the different art forms like I think know. it's definitely art that's grabbed me emotionally a lot of the time has been realist work so mm -hmm. like when you look at a lot of um, Baroque period works where they got very dramatic, very theatrical, lots of Caravaggio and those sort of artworks where it's very narrative tales told in the most dramatic moments of people being beheaded or okay. people in romance and things like that. They're always the artworks that make me stop in my tracks yeah. um, because they do grab you emotionally and, and not to say that abstracts and landscapes and things can't grab you emotionally, they can when they're really powerful and they're really good but 
something to do with the human body, the human face, it's so easy to connect to. Yeah. And it's so yeah. easy to sort of, yeah, be be enthralled by. That's the sort of effect I love. If I can make something that gets someone that excited and enthralled, and then I think I've succeeded. If I can get that yeah. feeling out of other people that I get when I look at artwork. Um, yeah. yeah, no, that's interesting. It's so it's kind of like... You know, you're a bit of a, you're attracted to the stories behind the artworks and like even the realistic, uh, you know, how you say you're talking about like the stories that attract you and that kind of relate. Well, they're not even necessarily like... about the narrative. The okay. narrative's sort of a, a vehicle for emotion. So oh, if you okay. have a story, be it like a religious story in artworks or a... Um, uh, like old gods, like Greek gods or something like that. I feel like a lot of the time artists have used these stories to create an emotionally charged atmosphere in their work. And I know in, historically a lot of the time it's, you know, the church was paying for the artwork so you had to paint the church stories and things like that. But it, it's been a way to create those kind of works and use those stories as tools. And okay. now we're in this awesome point in contemporary work where you don't even really need the stories anymore. You can just really focus in on the feeling. You can focus in yeah. on the moment and what charges you, what grabs your attention, what gets you emotionally and just yeah. focus on that. So a lot of my work is essentially that, finding emotion and what grabs people and manipulating Absolutely. it and creating it. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Like you, you, you're an artist with that... Uh, you work with emotion, you want to portray that sort of, um, you want to grab attention, like from yeah. people saying, wait, what, how does this make me feel and how does this relate to me yeah. as a human, you know, and I think... Really, really tap into people's own personal narratives, because everyone yeah. brings their own things to artwork, Absolutely. and I can only control so much, but what's really interesting is what dynamic happens when people look at something that, that grabs them, that really gets them passionate, and... I don't know, that, like, I have had someone come up to me because my work has made them cry in a positive way oh, and things wow. like that and it's just, that feels so powerful. Yeah, because you've made them, yeah. Yeah, and think about like authors and poets and songwriters, when you can create that kind of a reaction in someone, it's it's utterly awesome. <laughs> You'd feel bad very... <laughs> Yeah, just speechless. You'd be like, oh my gosh, did that, you know, like, that made you feel, you made someone just uh, feel so much emotion that they just started crying and just yeah. going like, wow, like that, that just would be very powerful. It and is. And it, it's quite... such a, it's an experience unlike any other, really. And it gets me so interested and so fascinated. I can't think of doing anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's it. Like, I think, it sounds like it's just been such a pivotal and just something that it's just you just don't really see yourself doing anything else in life. Uh, I've, I've tried to do other things. I've trained as a graphic designer and mm. I've worked retail and I've worked sales and all that kind of thing and it's all those things have always just been like a job. They're just a thing that you do for the paycheck but art is completely different. It's not just a passion. Like. It's, no, no. it's just something that I can never see myself not being involved with in some way. Mm. And that's it. I think, like, I've talked to so many people about that where it's like, they, you know, when they think to themselves, oh, man, I need to figure out something where I need to take a break from art. And then yeah. when they do take that break, and I know that this has happened to me, it's like there's a gaping hole missing. Like when you don't do art at all, like once it's kind of like that whole saying of once an artist, always an artist. Yes, you know, 100%. you can't. You, you can't just, switch it off. No, you can't. Like even when I was like for me when I was having that break, I was still always thinking about new concepts and all that. And I'm like, yeah. no, Jade, stop thinking about it. But then it just kept coming back, and it's like, uh, I think this is just a sign that. I'm just gonna always be. It's in your blood. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and um, but yeah, no, I think yeah, no, it's always you know, as you said, once always, it's like always a thing that is always gonna be there. And so, like, I guess you know, when it comes to concepts and ideas, like you know, you say that you create art with uh, emotional art and all that sort of thing. Are there like concepts that you like to focus on, or are they just like? I think it's more similar to Renaissance artists in that I do find sometimes that certain things will 
be a good jumping off point, like a mm -hmm. good narrative or things like that. And especially recently, I've actually wanted to focus on artworks that do create that reaction in me. Mm -hmm. How can I use those as a jumping off point? So one of them is in the National Gallery of Victoria. It's called Anguish by Frederick Schnecht. And it's okay. a mother you, a mother sheep. Standing oh, over course, its yeah. baby who's died and all these ravens mm. are surrounding her. So that yeah. was actually one that not only me, but apparently it's like the most popular piece in the NGV been voted wow. because it grabs so many people. And yeah. that feeling of anguish and that feeling of just Lost, grabbing yeah. you in the heartstrings in this moment of like trauma where there's nothing you can do. You know the ravens are gonna eat the baby and like there's, there's yeah. nothing the mother can do but throw its head back in sorrow. Um, but yeah, so that piece I ended up doing a study from that piece at the start of 2019 in black and white. I just tried to recreate the used face and see if I could capture that emotion mm -hmm. as like a master's study. Um, and then from there I translated it into a portrait of a human, trying to again replicate that same pull, yeah. but using a human figure and my language of colour and oil painting. Mm -hmm. And then from there it created this narrative that I worked into a large wall piece. I had a residency wow. at Barringer Gallery in Upway. And I've actually got a video of it this as well, I can show you that later. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I created this huge swirling cloudscape in dark blues and purples that sort of enveloped this wow. character of anguish. And then I created a second piece in bright pinks and magentas of the same figure, the same pose, just a slightly different angle, emerging from the cloudscape and sort of, by using a model doing the same pose, imparting in a completely different relationship, a different emotion that was almost just created through changing my mindset and changing my intention. And that was the idea of releasing anguish, that idea wow. of coming out of that cloud and how do you break free of that emotion that's crippling you and go forward. And yeah, after anguish release was that painting and she's one of my proudest pieces that I'm wow. super excited to be showing back at Burringer on um, 12th of March in a oh, show awesome. I'm in now. Well, yeah, so that little one up there will show a picture. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. So she was oh. the end of that project. So that shows one example of how I've used a piece that's captured me as a jumping off point for this journey of manipulating emotion through an image. Um, wow. And now, yeah, other pieces that I've done the same thing with, uh, my big piece from last year um, called Io, um, she was based off a piece by Correggio called Io and Jupiter, which is a story from Ovid, so it's a little Greek story, okay. of um, Zeus coming down and raping Io as a big oh, cloud. I, think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember if it's a Roman story or a Greek story. I think it's Roman because yeah. it's called Jupiter. But yeah, it's it's this original painting by Correggio of this cloud enveloping this nude figure. And it looks Aww. very consensual, which is not how the story is written, okay. Um, okay. of this romance between this cloud and this woman. And then when you read the story, it's rape. It's, it's yeah. full abuse. Yeah. She was running. She was petrified yeah. and running and yeah. then abused by Zeus. And yeah, I took that idea of the figure in the dark cloudscape where she has no control and power, still having the power within herself to stand up against what was around her against this this over enveloping feeling but retaining her strength and retaining her her what's the word agency yes. Io's agency that's what yeah. I titled the piece <laughs> sorry I knew it was two words <laughs> um, yeah so that piece was a, a second version of how do I take the, the powerful moment that affected me and that's what that painting I used to love it I used to love Correggio's piece so much and then I read the story and it completely flipped my opinion of it because I realised yeah. how much he'd manipulated the narrative to be this naff piece of romance when the story it's was not, the complete yeah. opposite. So I took my emotion of reading the original story and applied it to my own piece to rewrite the narrative and give Io the power over the situation yeah. rather than Jupiter. And yeah, I'd, I'm really enjoying how that sort of manipulation is allowing me to create work that I feel incredibly powerful about yeah. and yeah then I can go forward and, and hopefully make more works along this line that's the current idea so oh, I'd really awesome. like to create a bit of a body of work along this idea so I'm just at the starting point of that now. now that's really awesome I like how you kind of um, take the inspirations from artworks that made you feel something and go man I want to portray that emotion 
the way that this artwork has made me feel and like the use of like I, I thought it was really interesting how you said you used the use of what you said colored clouds to portray yeah, the, you know, and the, it's such an the cloudscape forms sort of came out of nowhere because yeah. I've never seen myself as like a landscape artist and that, but I've always had this idea of I want the background to integrate with the figure, and these clouds sort of became they started off as just little color studies as I was just playing with different colors on um, mm. painting on metal, and then they became sort of paintings into themselves, and then I tried to integrate them with the figures, and they've become a good way to sort of manipulate how the figure sits in the frame and really sort of how much space they have with or mm. without um, the environment impacting them. So yeah, yeah. they're, they're an interesting device and I'm still sort of experimenting mm. with them a bit, but I like them. And, and it's an, an, interest, an interesting way of um, going towards it because it's kind of like, you know, when you have people in the shot, obviously yeah. you can portray emotion to the people. But, through facial expression yeah, and that kind of thing, yeah. But then using it with the landscape and using it, like a, as you said, with the cloud colours and all that, is there a challenge in itself? Because, you know, there's not any emotion to work on, like, you know, there's none of that. You have to work with the landscape and work with the surroundings to portray that emotion. Mm. And that is an incredible challenge in itself and it seems like you were able to create that. And I really yeah. love that in your work, the um, the colours, the colours really do bring out uh, such a raw emotion and that's what, you know, the first time when, like I said, I saw that portrait that you did of me in that session, it was like a, it, it literally, I couldn't just remember just my breath getting taken away, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is just spectacular, like it's just the way you capture line work and just um, lighting, it's just, I don't know, I've never it's seen that before. Definitely it's just a lot of lighting, so even the way I'm drawing at the moment, it's all about how light hits the face. Hmm. Yeah, so even before colour, I really focus on capturing light on the figure, mm -hmm. and that probably comes from, again, how I've sort of learnt realism from life drawing, because a lot of the time you have a spotlight on the model. Yes. And that's a really good way to inform how the shapes of the body yeah. fit together with the environment. So. Yeah, I really enjoy finding that light and finding how it manipulates the figure. Um, that is also a challenge though, because uh, during COVID and that with online drawing, you often can't see lighting oh, as yeah. well. So I've, I've got, created my own challenges by ending up in this drawing style that's all about light. But yeah. it's it's been, I don't know, it's been a really interesting development. I sort of started working in this way maybe five years ago. Um, originally with charcoal drawings where I would sort of start with the whole surface covered mm -hmm. in charcoal and then erase out the figure. So it's a common drawing exercise a lot of people do. And then I've moved forward into using pastel. Um, and this is actually called a, a soft tool. And oh, okay, cool. A pan pastel. So it's a pastel in a little cake. Kind of looks like a giant eyeshadow. Yeah, yeah. I actually, the first time I saw it, I was like, is yeah. that an eyeshadow? Yeah. Like, why are you using eyeshadow? Yeah, it's, it's the same artist quality pastel as you would buy in a stick, but it just okay. allows me to apply blocks of colour very fast, and it almost feels more like painting, even though it's a um, dry media. Yeah, and so, so is it like. You said, is it a powder type? It's a powder, substance? yeah, so yeah. it's chalky powder, and then uh -huh. this little sponge tip allows me to sort of draw it on nice and smooth and oh, manipulate nice. it as much as I like. And starting on a coloured piece of paper as well means that you can sort of build up or take away colour. Um, wow. I say colour, I really mean light. <laughs> add, add and take away light, gotta use oh. the right words. That's fantastic, yeah, and yeah. so like when it comes to like, because you said that you've um, exhibited some of your work and oh, all yeah. that sort of thing. So what are some of the exhibitions that you've been able to have the opportunity to exhibit? Um, your I stuff was in? really really proud in twenty eighteen. I've had a solo show at Off the Curve Gallery in Collingwood. Congratulations! Uh, thank you. It was a huge huge amount of work. I think I did twenty paintings. Wow. Um, of which some were small and some were large, but yeah, Sheeny at Off the Curve Gallery amazing amazing curator um, putting together that show was sort of a personal challenge in and of itself and it's definitely something I'd love to do again like I have a solo show but um, yeah it was the first time I really got to solidify my practice and what I do and put it all in one room and invite everyone to come and see just me just what I do all in one space um, mm. and yeah it, it was very 
humbling and exciting to stand there and go, I'm an artist, this is what I do. Not, oh, I do art, but, you know, I'm a graphic designer or anything like that. No, I'm an artist and I, I want to own that and I want to yeah. keep that. pursuing <laughs> this. Yeah, I, I still want to be an artist when I'm like 95 and the kooky lady with green hair when I'm that <laughs> old and that'd be great. And this is a life that I've, I've chosen and I, I don't want to give it up for anything, so... Yeah, it sounds there. like it. That yeah. show is huge. And now, yeah, I've been a part of a, a really nice collection of group shows in the last couple of years. Um, and I've had a bit of luck in art prizes and things as well. So wow. I'm trying to pursue a bit more of that in the year to come forward. So art prizes have been really lovely just in terms of being able to meet more and more artists who mm -hmm. like what you like, especially like portrait prizes, because I do so many portraits yeah. and things yeah. like that. Um, and a lot of my start came from the Graham Hildebrand Art Prize in 2017. So I actually won the major prize in that, which wow. was a big cash prize, which was very exciting. And that's, that's awesome. what paid for my solar exhibition and all the materials wow. and everything for that. So those sort of opportunities I'm eternally grateful for. Yeah. Um, like the Graham Hildebrand Foundation, huge thanks to them, huge thanks to Beautiful Bazaar magazine. Um, I was a finalist in their art prize in 2019 with that piece we discussed after Anguish yeah. release. Yeah. Um, and that's led to me being accepted into two international exhibitions. I've shown in San Francisco now and I've wow. shown in New Zealand. Um, it's is, amazing. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. Updating your CV to have two international locations, which is so, so cool. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping to do a bit more of that and get my work wow. seen a bit more internationally. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that, that's incredible. Thank like, you. a lot of people definitely haven't had that many opportunities. I think oh, that's no. just amazing. And, and, and that, again, it's, it's yeah. things that you don't you don't know they're coming until they're suddenly there, and it, it all feeds off just keep working, just keep doing your thing, keep putting yourself out there, um, even when it's hard to, because you never know what's around the corner. And that's oh, like, really 2019, don't. I didn't produce a lot of work, but I was able to do that one residency, and that led into an art prize, and that led into a big piece for 2020 going to San Francisco. So it, it all sort of works together if you just keep keep at the grind. We're all in the grind. <laughs> We're all going through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But. It's all about the persistence. Like I remember I was talking to someone else during the interviews and they said that you can tell the the passionate people because they're always persistent. They don't oh, give we're, up. we're stubborn fucks. Yeah. You don't know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's okay. That's all right. And well, that's it. No like, judgment, I, yeah. I am definitely a stubborn fuck when it comes no, to doing yeah. this kind of stuff because I, I, yeah. I won't take no for an answer, I guess. Or like... I get that. I won't give up. And even when, yeah, the day job sort of becomes overwhelming and sometimes you sort of lose your practice a little bit just because of timing and that sort of stuff, you, you can't give up fully. And art's one of those fantastic things that we're not limited by age, we're not limited by, you know, time. Even if I can't paint for the next three years, I could still paint in that fourth year and, and come right back. So mm. I'm, I'm quite blessed and I think we're all a bit lucky as artists that there's no age, there's no time, there's just a, you do it. Yeah, that's it. Do it when you can do it. But yeah, I think definitely a lot of artists are very stubborn in that way of going, nah, I'm not going to give up. Like, I know that for me as a photographer, I'm just like, nah, I'm not quitting right now because I, no, I just can't do that. <laughs> the same thing, if you can't do it for, you know, a month, a year, who cares? Do it the year after that. And yeah, come back to it. You'll come back to it. Your camera will still be there. It'll be great. Yeah. Um, so I really hope, yeah. No, that's that. it. Yeah, oh, I think that's great advice to anyone that's creating art out there and it's just like, you know, being persistent, because I think yeah. it's always, things won't happen overnight, as you said, like, you know, like, things just don't happen. Oh, it would be nice if oh, they did. Oh, I gosh, wish, then I wish everyone they would. would do it. But yeah, like, I think, as you said, I think everyone would love it for it to happen overnight, but yeah. I feel like, I'm guessing, for you to have those um, things happen, you would be like, oh, man, that was just so worth the wait, you know, oh, all yeah, the hard 100, work. Oh, yeah, 100%. And that's yeah. what, in, in a lot of ways, I'm like, I'm kind of glad they didn't happen earlier when I was a not as good artist or not as <laughs> together with getting things done. I don't know. I, I always feel like my favourite painting is the last one I finished. So yeah, yeah. a lot of the time I, I, I don't want to, you know, wish for things until I feel like I'm ready for them. But you're never ready for things at the same time. So it's a bit of a hard dynamic. 
Mm. Like, I haven't entered a lot of the really big Australian art prizes because I just haven't felt ready. And yeah. the other part of me is like, Liz, grow some balls, just, just <laughs> enter. <laughs> Yeah. But I'll, I'll get there when I get there. It'll happen. I just need to get there. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> it. I think, um, yeah, and sometimes we need that, like, uh, good support of people going, because sometimes I think we're our own worst critic. We go, like, oh, yeah, 100%. oh, I don't think we're ready, but then we just need that outside person going, nope, come on. You're doing you know, it we're now. Gonna, yeah, yeah, you're going to do it. I had, um, mm -hmm. yeah, like, I think the same thing. I had a mate who uh, we were both Zoom, Zoom members, mm -hmm. and... They did a photography competition and he kind of was just like, no, Jane, do it, you know. And then um, I showed him some photos and he's like, no, do this one. And I'm like, are you sure? And I'm like, no, just do it. And that photo came runners up. <laughs> just do it. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah thank you. It's fantastic <laughs> advice. Yeah, yeah. And that's what, like, it really is. And, like, I always have the, you've got to be in it sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no point wishing for something if you don't even enter. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, uh, which I know is that's hypocritical it. when I just said I didn't enter a lot of things, and <laughs> I, I will eventually, but let, that's it. I know I can't get anywhere until I give it a go. Yeah. And what's the worst that will happen? You lose your administration fee and that kind of thing. I'd much rather... It is kind of a gamble. I'd rather gamble that administration fee on something I'm really passionate about than going out and buying a new pair of jeans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So exactly. I don't know. That's just my priorities. But no, yeah. no that, that sounds yeah. Thank got you. your got your head straight. <laughs> yeah, somewhat. Somewhat, somewhat yeah. Somewhat. <laughs> but um, okay. So um, for a final thing, for yeah. a final question, I'll ask you. So tell us about your new art show that's coming up. Sure. Um, so it's called Women Painting Women Number Three. So this is the third edition of a realist painting exhibition at the Barringer Gallery in Upwork. And I'm actually hanging with a lot of artists that I really admire, like Sally awesome. Ryan and Vicky Sullivan, um, who are huge in the realist painting world and they've entered all the big art prizes. And um, Saren Hannaford from South Australia, she won an honourable mention in the Archibald last year. Wow. She's in this show. So I feel like a little fish in a big pond, but <laughs> it's very exciting. It's opening on the 13th of March at Boringer Gallery and it'll be actually on show from the 6th uh, I think through till the 21st. Wow. Um, but yeah, definitely I'll give you all the details for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It is a, it's going to be a beautiful show of lots of gorgeous portraiture and figure painting and yeah, I highly recommend yeah, you know, come down good. and say hi. No, that's it. And yeah. you know, I'll definitely leave links to it in, you know, the, you. this video Thank description so people good. can check out this work, you know. I'll be promoting it on my pages as well because I'll definitely be making it as well. Thank you. And um, but yeah. yeah in the like, meantime, thank you for letting me draw you today. Oh, that's so, great. Do you I see think, how we went. Yeah, let's see the final there you result. Go. Let's see. That's. Oh gosh, that that's amazing. I love it. It was kind of interesting trying to draw you while you were talking, but yeah, no, that was quite fun. So, so that's my little portrait. That's okay. amazing. Bit, oh yeah. yeah. That is amazing. Hey. Something very, I love it. That's amazing. <laughs> thank you for that. No worries. And um, well, I just want to say first of all, thank you so much for inviting me into your home and taking the time to no talk worries. about what you do. Love your work and uh, all thank that. You. And like when I was looking, was thinking of guests, I'm like, no, I need to get Liz <laughs> onto here. And a few people actually requested this oh, as well. Thank you so, so much. No, it's been lovely to chat. You're a great chat. So, oh, yeah. I'm looking so forward to watching more episodes. So, uh, guys, if you want to check out Liz's work, I will leave links to all of her stuff. Uh, I'll thank leave you. links to the new exhibition coming up. What did you say it was called? So, it's called Women Painting Women 3 at Barringer Gallery. And then, yeah, you can check out links. I've got my website, lizgridley.com.au. I'm here on YouTube and Instagram as well. So. Absolutely. And I'll leave all those links so that you, people can check out your amazing work. Thanks so much, Dan. No, no, that's okay. And uh, so comment, like, and subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I will see you in the next video.